Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV, and if you've been a regular returning member of the RV Nerd Herd, you've seen where I've been uh, rolling out my sort of RV review, year in review, top five listicles. Couples, campers, bunkhouses, fifth wheels, trailers, all that stuff. Um, and a bunch of people chimed in and said, you know, this stuff's all great, I like these things, but I ain't got a Peterbilt to tow these things, partner, you know? Uh, what do you have for somebody who has, say, like a mid-sized pickup or a good tow package SUV? And I kind of thought about that, and I love that suggestion, by the way. So what I've done today is compiled a list, uh, some couples models, some bunkhouses, and then we're going to end on one that's kind of both, that are 5,000 pounds or less. Uh, and what I mean by that is not 5,000 pounds dry weight, 5,000 pounds maximum GVWR with cargo. Now that does mean that today's list is going to be very heavily populated by single axle models, but not all of them will be. I worked really hard to find a couple cool tandem axle models that are 5,000 pounds or less. So if you're looking for something small, you're looking for something light, or you're just looking for a way to kill the next 20 minutes, stay tuned and enjoy. All right, let's kick off the camping fun with some couples models here. And today's video, by the way, these picks that I have are in no particular order. I'm not ranking these things. But kicking things off here, um, I've seen other campers kind of like this, but as far as I know, the one that I'm about to show you was sort of the original. So for that, I, I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a nod, giving it some specific recognition. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bitches RV with something a little bit fun, a little bit different for you today. This is the Riverside Retro 135 and if you're looking at it, you might be like me and going, where's the door? <laughs> well, it's off the back of this one because this is a rare example of what I call a towable truck camper. It's very similar to a wolf pup you may have actually seen previously on this channel, but I believe this actually predates that wolf pup. And if I'm being fair, I actually think I like this one's bathroom better. And I think it's very cool that instead of a, uh, a conventional dinette that everyone else does, they did things a little bit differently, not just from the standpoint of the cosmetics, which have that cool little retro diner side uh, kind of flair, you know, but also the fact that it gives us a door side bench instead of a door side dinette, which is something I thought would actually be really cool in that wolf pup that they nailed here. Um, it's This is certainly, again, not for everybody, but what I like about this is as compared to a truck camper, which you need a truck with a pretty decent payload capacity to handle the weight in the bed of the truck, by putting it down on the ground and rolling down the road, you have expanded the number of potential vehicles that can handle this camper by, by just 10 magnitudes, basically. Uh, because this thing only, it weighs less than 2,600 pounds dry, it weighs just over 3,700 pounds loaded with cargo. There are so many vehicles that could handle this thing, they just couldn't handle a truck camper, and it opened, like, not everybody needs a big monster camper. Some of us just want a little thing to get away and, and to, to just have a little fun, you know? That's where this guy comes in. Let me know what you think about this guy as we go through. Now, there's a lot of really good campers here that come in under 5,000 pounds maximum weight, but if you really look, there's, like, three or four floor plans that are really, really popular that everybody builds. So when I see somebody who's willing to find a way to build it different, to ha be a little bit original, it really earns some points with me. And frankly, it, there's just a very short exclusive list of campers that can manage to put a full bed slide under 5,000 pounds loaded with cargo. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, every now and then an RV comes along that just has showstopper written on it. This is one of them. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV and the new 169 FSX. It says Wildwood on the front of this one. It could just as easily say Salem. They're the same thing. And I'll tell you why this thing's got me jazzed up. Tell me how many other RVs you know out there are 4,000 pounds with a bed slide. That is crazy, that is incredible. It is very, very cool, and I don't know if I've really seen a whole lot of them, not at like 4,000 pounds. Now I wanna dive into that a little bit, um, cause this is one of the biggest, heaviest single axle FSXs that exists out there. Um, they, these things ride on about 5,000 pound axles, so that means that this has a little over 900 pounds of available cargo capacity in its current state. If you go adding the solar package and the platinum package, which adds the fiberglass skin, you will actually add more weight and eat into your cargo capacity a little bit, so kind of keep that in mind. But this thing is wild, and you know what? It, it, when I walked inside, it struck me. I realized what this was. 
This is like a miniature motorhome that has been squished and condensed and molded into a tiny towable RV. Think about it. Where that front dinette is up there in the living area, that would be almost like the overhead cab area. What they did is they got rid of like the driving cab and they just put your seating there and then you just have a kitchenette and a walk-through bath like a lot of small motorhomes and a private, that's the thing that shocked me, private rear bath or bedroom on this one. I'm just, I'm very, very impressed. What this actually reminds me a lot of is years and years ago when um, Cruiser RV used to make these tiny, small, condensed ultralight models, they had a rear bed slide kind of like this. But I've seen, I haven't seen anybody try to build anything like that forever. This is why, let me know what you think of this. This is cool. But if we're gonna do a list like this and we're going to talk about some of the uh, like, best executed, most popular, well done, lightweight, small, no bunk campers. I just, I don't know how you could rightly do it and not bring these guys into the mix. And before we begin, first of all, a quick shout out to Halid RV viewer Jenny, uh, who advised that her keyless entry door pads combo was 8675309. I don't know why she felt it was important to share that with us. And it's funny how you meet people sometimes. Sometimes they see us first here on YouTube. Uh, sometimes they see like an old, maybe an ad that we have on TV locally or in the newspaper. Um, Jenny, we found her name and number on a wall. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the 3330 pound, as we see it here today, roughly Rockwood 19 FBS Geo Pro. And this thing is just a uh, everyday crowd pleaser. It is one of the most popular of the entire Geo Pro series. Um, and we're actually going to get to see it today with a couple options that um, I, I talk about very often in my previous videos, but we haven't really always had a chance to see like the bike rack, like the convection microwave oven. And we're going to discuss a few others that maybe you don't see, but also have available as we go. I will go through this as we do point out the good with the bad. Like it's awesome that it has factory solar. It actually has an interestingly intentionally smaller 12 volt compressor fridge so that you don't suck the batteries dry nearly as easily in this thing as compared to most of the trailers using 12 volt fridges out there. But at the same time, the smaller size of this RV sometimes works against it. For instance, this has really good holding tank capacities. I'm shooting from the hip, but I think it's something like 50 gallons fresh, 30 black, 30 gray. That's sweet. But the trick is, especially that fresh tank is so large, you actually cannot enclose the underbelly of this little thing. Although they have finally standardized the uh, 12 volt tank heaters. And that's really what's interesting about this. If you look through the history of GeoPros, you've always been able to basically build one like this, but they basically just have made almost all the options standard. And again, we'll point out a couple that are still available or uh, that you don't necessarily see here. Now, if you appreciate the way that we give you that good, fair information, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and leave us some comments as we go. Let me know what you think about these things, uh, the good, the bad, with the ugly, and everything in between. And if you would like to see one of these a little bit larger, couldn't have timed this any better. We got one rolling in right behind it over here. Uh, this has a big brother called a Rockwood 2109S, and then it has another big brother called a 2205. Those numbers might not mean anything to you, but listen up as we go through and I'll explain what they mean. Now, it's not to say that they don't also make some awesome family campers, but you know, their couples models are truly just where they absolutely crush it. Kicking things off in our bunkhouse camp was one that was, it's hard to find. And Winnebago is one of the very few brands out there who managed to come up with a way of giving us a tandem axle RV that was exactly 5,000 pounds GVW on the nose. So if what you're looking for is the safety and stability of something that's narrow body but has quad wheels for good easy towing and they use that good suspension system, it just it, it was just an easy shoe in for me on this list. Are you looking for small and simple and just a couple little bunks? But you don't want to have to deal with the wiggle and the worry of a single axle. Well then stay tuned, you don't want to miss this. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd over here in Idaho today with the Winnebago Micro Mini 1800. If you're tired of seeing the same old single axle stick and tin camper, if you're looking for tandem axles, if you're looking for upscale, you just don't want big, this, uh, you found it, congratulations. Um, 
you know, it's been a couple years since I got my hands on one of these, and they have taken it up a notch. And actually, this is the very first time I've ever been able to get my hands on the 1800 bunkhouse right here. Um, it, it has a lot of really high-end, classy features. The build, the fit, and the finish, the materials on this are all in the premium grade category, absolutely without question. It comes with the, uh, you know, the uh, like axle lift package and Goodyear Wrangler tires on this thing factory standard um there's a couple different like solar configurations that you can put on these the underbellies enclosed radiant barrier heated I, I mean there's there's a ton of like big fancy features going on in this little package that does mean it is not the least expensive little camper you've ever seen it also means though it's one of the best little campers you've ever seen in terms of feature and function um, I will be fair, I'm going to point out a lot of really up sharp things you do not usually find in a small class like this. But along the way, I'm also going to hit on some things like it doesn't have necessarily like a true queen bed. Uh, there's going to be a couple things like that. that there's going to be people go, God bless America. Why don't they make it with a longer walk around bed? They, they do. But, um, you know, it's a longer camper, it's heavier, it's more expensive. This comes in around 3,800 pounds dry weight. The maximum weight of this, by the way, is 5,000 pounds. So, uh, I, anything above 5,000 pounds that you have as a tow package, and the more you have above that, the happier you're going to be. And the fact that this is riding on tandem axles instead of a single means it just rides and handles so much better, especially with the suspension they have in these. Like I said, there's a ton to hit on this one. I can't wait to hear what you people think about it. Leave me the comments as we go, and make sure you hit subscribe because we've got more Winnie's coming. Now, when I make these lists, I don't know if you've uh, noticed, put this together. I, I really generally try not to repeat the same brand more than once just because it starts to feel like, like it just feels disingenuous. Like obviously this guy is just biased toward one brand or another, but we're jumping from couples models to bunkhouses here. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Wildwood's been coming up with a bunch of really popular floor plans in a more budget focused stick and tin category that have been getting copied left, right, and center by these high dollar laminated uh, fancy pants brands. And it's not to say like this exact same floor plan I'm gonna show you, you can find it in a bigger, more expensive thing, but they're all over uh, a 5,000 pound maximum tow rating with cargo. And that's why this one, both being the original and being under 5,000 pounds max, earned its place on this list again today. Yeah, baby, yes! That is what I'm talking about right there, the Wildwood 178 BHSK. I think this is quite possibly one of the best, like as close to perfect little simple family bunkhouse campers as you can get right here, to the tune that Obviously, other people seem to agree. Wildwood comes out with this model in the FSX series, which is a really crafty in-betweener series if you're not familiar with it. It's seven and a half wide instead of just seven wide. So they're able to include some eight wide camper features into this, such as those double double bunks. And it's got a really cool camp kitchen. And hang with me till we step outside because I've got an idea for that that I want to run past you and I need some feedback from you. Uh, last year, we saw a total interior facelift. And this year they did touch up a couple elements like, for instance, he got rid of the carpet in the slide. Yes! That is one of those things that just never made sense to me on this one. But they have also uh, touched up a couple colors on some cushions, some dinette fascia, some things like that. But the exterior, to me, looks so much better. They didn't really change the construction or anything, but the decals and the color palette it now matches the rest of the Wildwood family instead of this red stripe that never seemed to really fit in with anything else. I think they just continue to, to step forward little by little, knocking it out like a little bit better sofa cushion setup uh, for that kind of Murphy Jiffy flopsy job sofa that we're going to talk about. They just keep nailing it. And like I said, other people must agree. Wildwood comes out with this model. Catalina says, I like that. I'm going to copy that and call it the 184 BHS. Jay Feather Micro says, I love that. I'm going to call it the 199. These guys are the trendsetter though. But you know, there's just, there's a whole big wide world of RVs out there. And a lot of these brands that you've seen, if you've watched your channel for years, you've seen these and heard these names before. I wanted to make sure I specifically sought out and hunted out something that was new to me since joining the ranks of Bish's RV. And I found one that I, th I think you're gonna like. Hey everybody, if you've been looking for a small camper that's lightweight with big bunks, then stay tuned, I might have found just the one for you. Hey 
everybody. Up here in our Coopersville, Michigan location today with a Surveyor 19 MDBLE, which is a lot of letters. That's quite a bit of alphabet soup here. But this is a really sweet camper. It comes in just over 4,000 pounds, which opens it up uh, to be, you know, towable by a lot of, say, bigger tow package SUVs, maybe potentially tow package midsize pickups, and of course, you know, tow package half tons and above. Um, and it brings a lot of big camper features into that smaller size. Like we've got a uh, extra tall ceiling. We've got a, uh, a bendy bed style Murphy bed, which can open up during the day and really expand your living space. Plus it has a dinette slide open things up further. So if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, factor in the extra tall ceiling as well. You don't feel like you're really crammed into a little bitty space on this one. Um, it also brings with it uh, something that's really hard to find in small campers, and that's a set of double size bunks. It interestingly also doesn't have a traditional camp kitchen, which I think a lot of people might specifically hunt for. There's a Every time I uh, show an RV with a camp kitchen, the number one request is, can I get it without that? And usually, no, you can't. But with this one, you don't have to worry about it. But it does still bring with it a neat little outside, uh, you know, garden hose style sprayers in case you got to do a little quick cleanup. And it does have a little griddle outdoors. The underbelly is enclosed. It's got a big air conditioner on it, where Asdell, it has a, a ladder on the back. There's a lot of good things going on with this one. I'd love to hear what you think about it. And as we go, let me know your favorite thing about it. Let me know your least favorite thing. And if you're new with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button to catch us on the next time. But for now, let's get inside here. Now, I want to offer, before we wrap up with our final uh, clip today, to just simply mention that I'm not saying with this video that these are the only small campers you should consider anything like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And again, I, I had to set some kind of limitation. So I said, okay, 5,000 pounds GVW. If you start going up to like 5,500 GVW, or if you said 5,000 pounds dry weight, this would look completely different. Just the world of opportunities starts opening up. But we had to kind of draw a line in the sand and offer some definitions somewhere. And if you appreciate what we're doing here today, bringing you some ideas based on your suggestions, thank you, by the way, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. And remember, I will leave you links in the video description to see full length copies of uh, any RV mentioned here today. So if you see this little snippet and you're like, oh, I kind of like that, there's a, there's a whole lot more to learn. So now to finish things up, we've seen some couples campers. We've seen some bunk models. What if there was something that was both? Are you looking for 10 pounds of camper in a five pound sack? Because that's how you do it right there. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Fish's RV with an 18TO Wolf Pup. Uh, this is a very interesting model in that it's like the smallest thing I've ever seen with a full, what you could call, super slide. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting about this, it's a solo camper. It's a couple's camper. It's a small family camper. It's good if you got a couple dogs. It is really interesting the number of different uses this one floor plan can offer you because it's got uh, you know your, your queen bed across the front, but then in the super slide, you have a sofa and a dinette that could fold down, but then there's this cool little hidden bonus bunk that comes included with this thing. So it's a small little trailer that could sleep one to five people, frankly, or a couple dogs. I, I know that even a small dog occupies the space of a big human. <laughs> Anyone else's little dog eat up half the bed? Um, it is fairly heavy as far as a single axle goes, but it still like has a maximum GVW of about 5,000 pounds. So this is an interesting in-betweener get out of jail free card that can sometimes work for people who have like a limited tow capacity or a small like parking space. They can't fit a big camper, uh, like a big giant bunkhouse somewhere else. This can be that one in between here that gets the job done. Now, it's not without its little hiccups. As a result, it is kind of what I'm gonna lovingly call a mutant, but it's also got some really cool features that are really hard to find in a little trailer like this. Let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button, like our video. Let's get rolling, woo! So thank you very much for hanging out with old Uncle Josh again today, everybody. If you like our video, hit that like button. Drop me a little comment here and let me know um, which one of these on this list was your favorite today? Either couples or bunk model or the, the mutant hybrid in betweener there that we looked at. Um, and if you can think of one that like, you're like, listen, it's under 5,000 pounds GVW or it's darn close and you really like that thing. Drop me a little note in the comment section. Maybe I have a video of it. Maybe it's one I got to get added to my hit list. Cause just like this video today, you folks and your suggestions are truly what drives this channel. So until next time, thanks again for tuning in. Take care, stay safe. 
have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.